Hey everyone, so today we'll be solving problem E, Zor inverse of code forces round 673. So let's get to the whiteboard. So the problem says that you are given an array A of n non-negative integers and you have to choose a non-negative integer x and form a new array B in such a way that Bi equals Ai Zor x. Now this x should be in such a way that the number of inversions in the array B are minimized. What the problem means by inversions is that for two indexes i and j, i is less than j and bi is greater than bj. So let's take an example. Let's say our initial array had six integers and they were 15, 3, 6, 10, 12 and 0. Now the idea here is to start from the most significant bit and reach the least significant bit. So basically what I mean by that is let's say we had a x and we do not know its bit set. So we can make blanks here. Now let's first fix one at this bit. So basically if this bit was one, then Zor of X and 15 for this bit would be zero. Then Zor of X with three for this bit would be one. And similarly one, zero, zero and one. Now let's try to count the guaranteed number of inversions we can count from here. So basically if you see three after Zor for this bit is one and 10 after Zor for this bit is 0. So basically we can say that no matter what values we get after this bit, this 3 after Zor will always be greater than 10 after Zor. So we can say that 3 comma 10 is an inversion. Now similarly we can say the same thing for 3 and 12 also. So we have 3 and 12 also. Then we'll have an inversion for 6 and 10 and 6 and 12. So we'll have 6 and 10 and 6 and 12. Now let's try to change this bit to 0. Now if this bit was 0, we can say that Zor of 15 with x for this bit would be 1, then 0, 0, 1, 1 and 0. And now if we try to count the number of inversions here, we can say that, so basically we have 1 for 15 and we have 0 for 3. So we can say that 15 after Zor will always be greater than 3 after Zor. So we can say we have a inversion for 15 comma 3 then we can say that we'll have an inversion for 15 6 also so 15 6 then the next inversion will be for 15 and 0 so we can say 15 and 0 then the next inversion will be 10 and 0 and 12 and 0 so we can say 10 and 0 and 12 and 0 now if you see the number of inversions we were able to count for 0 were 5 and the number of inversions we were able to count for 1 were 4. So basically we can say that this index will always have 1 in the answer. Now the thing here is that we only looked for guaranteed inversions till now and there might be a case that this 3 and 6 also had an inversion. For that what we'll do is we'll actually split this complete array into two sets. And how we'll do that is basically we'll make a set in which one is at the most significant bit and then the other set will have all the numbers with, which had zero at the most significant bit. So basically the first set will have three, six and zero. So the better, I'll only write the bit representation. So we'll have zero, zero, one and one. Then we'll have zero, one, one and zero. And then we'll have zero, zero, zero and zero. And then the other set will have the rest of the numbers. So basically we'll have 1, 1, 1 and 1, then we'll have 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 and 0, then we'll have 1, 1, double 0, 1, 1, double 0. Now we're done with the first index, so let's move to the next index. Let's say this index was 1. Now if this index was 1, then we can say that this bit will convert into 1, this bit will convert into 0 and this bit will convert into 1. Likewise, this bit will convert into 0, this will convert into 1 and this bit will convert into 0. Now if we count the guaranteed number of inversions we have here are, then we can say that we'll have an inversion for this and this and in this set we'll have an inversion for this and this. So let me write the values also. So basically this was 3, 6, uh, this was 3, 6 and 0 and this was 15, 10 and 12. So basically if this bit was if this bit was 1 we can say that we'll have an inversion for 3 and 6 and here we'll have an inversion for 10 and 12. So let's write this we'll have an inversion for 3 6 and we'll have an inversion for 10 and 12. Now let's say that this bit was 0. If this bit was 0 then the bits will remain the same only then we can say that we'll have an inversion for 6 and 0 and here we'll have an inversion for 15 and 10. So 
will have an inversion for 6 and 0 and will have an inversion for 15 and 10. Now, if we see the count of the guaranteed number of inversions when this bit was 1 were 2 and the count of guaranteed number of inversions when this bit is 0 are also 2. So basically, we can take any of the 0 or 1 and the count of inversions will remain same. But the question clearly mentions that we have to find the minimum x, therefore we will be taking 0 for this index. Now, since we are done with this index also, now we'll again split these two sets into further more sets in such a way that the bit at this index is 1 and in the other set, the bit at that index will have to be 0. So basically, we'll have two sets from here and two sets from here. Now, in this set, we'll have all the numbers whose bit at this index was 1. So basically, we had 1 in this. So basically, we'll have 6 here and the bit representation is 0, 1, 1 and 0. And in the other set, we'll have 3 and 0. So we'll have 3 and 0. And this will be 0, 0, 1 and 1 and we'll have 0, 0, 0 and 0. Now for this also we'll have two sets again. In the first set we'll have 10 and the bit representation will be 1, 0, 1 and 0 and in the other set we'll have 15 and 12. So this is 15 and 12. We'll have 1, 1, 1 and 1 and here we'll have 1, 1, 0 and 0. Now let's say that the bit at this index was 1. Now if the bit at this index was 1, we can say that this bit will convert to 0, this bit will convert to 0, this bit will convert to 1, this will convert to 0, this will convert to 0 and this will convert to 1. Now since there is only one value in this set, we can say that it will not add up to any of the inversions. Then in this set we have two values, so we might have an inversion here. So if we see, since this is 0 and this is 1, there cannot be an inversion. Now in this set also we won't have any inversions and same for all this set also. Now let's say that this bit was 0. Now if this bit was 0, then we can say that this bit was 1. We had 1 here also, 0 here, 1 here, then again 1 here and 0 here. Now let's count the inversions. So basically in this set we only had one value so therefore no inversions. Now in this set we had two values and we might have an inversion. And if you see we have 1 at this index and 0 at this index that means this will add up to an inversion. So we can say that we'll have one inversion for 3 0 and then likewise we won't have any inversions in this set then then in this set we can say that since this bit is 1 and this is 0 we'll have an inversion so basically 15 and 12. So if you see when we took 0 we had two inversions and when we took 1 we had 0 inversions therefore we can say that it is better to take 1 for this index so we'll fix 1 here and now let's split these into further more sets. So basically since we had only one value in this set therefore there is no point of splitting it furthermore. Then for this also we had two values and we can split it into two sets. One is for 3 and the other is 0. But we can see that after this we will have only one one values in all the sets. Therefore there won't be any more inversions after this. And we can say that with 0 also we had will have 0 inversions and if we fix 1 at this value then also we will have 0 inversions. And since we have to make the smallest value we can say that we will take 0 for this answer. And if we see this actually becomes 10. And if we have to count the number of inversions then we can say that we had 1 for this and if we had 1 we had 4 inversions. Then for the next we had 0 and we had 2 inversions and then for other sets we had 0 0 inversions. Therefore the total number of inversions for this example will be 6 and the value will be 10. Now let's try to understand why this greedy works. So we know that this one contributes to 4 inversions and this 0 contributes to 0 inversions and after that we have 0 inversions. So let's say that instead of taking this bit as 1, we would have taken it as 0. Now the number of inversions would have changed to 5 here. But the division between the steps would have st still remained the same and we can say that number of inversions after this step would have remained the same only. And with this we can say that we always have to minimize the number of inversions at the current index and therefore taking 0 at this step will not decrease the number of inversions and we can say that this greedy will always work. So this is the code. I'll have the link to my submission in the description below. If you still have any doubts in the problem. Feel free to reach out to me and like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of such editorial videos.